Here are five charts that explain what happens to markets during periods of stagflation. Whether it's mild or severe, it's always an unwanted visitor, stagflation. It's an unpleasant mix of high inflation and low growth. Economists start getting worried when this arrow, which tracks unexpected inflation, starts moving upwards, while this arrow, an index that represents economic activity, starts pointing down. And that's exactly what's happening in 2022. This is setting in motion a potential vicious circle of inflation and stagnation. So here are five charts showing the investments that have either sunk, stayed afloat, or even picked up pace during every episode of stagflation since the 1970s. Stagflation is a mix of two words, stagnation and inflation. It happens when inflation pushes up prices while economic output falls. In other words, an economy that isn't working properly. It might make you think of the 1970s, bad fashion, flares and disco, but also double digit inflation, stagnant growth and market misery. We cannot accept high rates of inflation as a permanent fact. The thing is, stagflation isn't as uncommon as you might think. The grey lines on this chart show every quarter of stagflation since the 1970s. There's been 68 in total. If you put them back to back, it would last a staggering 17 years. Stagflation is one of four business cycles you need to know about. Reflation, when the economy is boosted by stimulus packages, is the rarest. A fall in the price of goods or deflation happened 47 times, which is classic recession territory. If the economy isn't too cold or too hot, but just about right, it's known as Goldilocks. There have been 63 quarters of steady growth and moderate inflation. This leaves our unwanted friend stagflation as the most frequent business cycle. If you click here, you can watch Capital.com's latest debate on just who is to blame for inflation. It's just one of the many videos we produce alongside explainers and chart analysis on all sorts of different financial markets. During periods of stagflation, there's one major asset that outperformed all the rest. The gold medal goes to, well, gold, and it wins at a canter. In fact, it performed over twice as well as its nearest competitor. In the 1970s, the big era of stagflation, the price of gold ramped up over 800%. But gold didn't have its own way during every business cycle. No lover of fairy tales, gold actually made an average annual loss during Goldilocks of minus 3.1%. Central banks reflating their economies full of money meant that gold returned on average over 8%. Anxious investors turning to gold in search of security meant that it went up 13% during deflation. But for gold, stagflation was a winning combination. Inflation pushed its price high while low growth and market anxiety kept dollars flowing towards it and it made profits of over 32%. Crude oil goes in and great Jupiter, the things that come out. The commodity that tends to head in the opposite direction to gold is oil. But to understand what happens to oil during periods of stagflation, we need to go back to the 70s. Oil began the decade at just over $3 per barrel, but then there were two huge supply side shocks. 1973 dramatized US dependence on foreign oil. The first was in 1973. OPEC oil producing nations announced an embargo on countries that had supported Israel during the Yom Kippur War. 
The Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries imposed its boycott and within a year raised prices more than 300%. The US couldn't increase production, so the price of oil rose to over $12 a barrel. The second shock came in 1978. Iran's oil workers went on strike in the run-up to the Iranian Revolution. This caused a squeeze on global prices and the price of oil soared. By the end of the decade, oil had reached $37 a barrel. Oil ended the 70s as the second best performing sector with inflation adjusted gains of 440%. And if you want to learn more about the price of oil and just what causes its volatility, you can learn more about that subject by clicking up here. We have losers. We have losers. It's a tag that no one wants, but stagflation creates its fair share of market losers. We've analysed returns for every major sector since 1970 and here are the inflation adjusted results. First up, the healthcare sector. It's stable and offers reliable dividends. But healthcare suffers when inflation pushes up the costs of goods and services. Which means it's our first loser delivering a negative annual return of almost 3%. Technology's vulnerability to rising interest rates meant that the sector lost an average of almost 5%. Shopping or retail might seem like a surprising stagflationary loser. High inflation can mean high grocery prices, but high input costs like capital and labour cancel out gains made at the cash register. And that leaves the shopping sector in second worst place at 4.9%. But the biggest loser was durables, things like washing machines, fridge freezers or dryers. Consumers tend to put off buying big ticket items until they can easily afford them and durables made an average loss of 7.2%. For every yin, there's a yang, and for every sector that hates stagflation, we found the ones that love it. Energy crept into profit, but returns here were almost cancelled out by low growth and high prices. Non-durables, things like food and clothes that we need to keep purchasing, made incremental profits, while manufacturing fared only slightly better. But let's look at the most important stock index, the S&P 500 or US 500, an index of the 500 biggest companies in America. The index plummeted 42% in real terms during the great stagflation of the 70s as it wasn't able to outpace inflation. But it picked up during the less intense periods of stagflation from the 80s onwards, making an average annual return of 1.7%. The telecom sector made the silver medal position, helped by their historical positions as monopolies with the power to set their own prices. Which takes us to our stagflationary top spot, the utility sector. These are the companies that provide the stuff we really need, like gas, electricity or water. Returns of 11.5% show that while people might cut back on luxury items during downturns, they aren't going to turn off the lights. And remember, no two periods of stagflation are exactly the same. They can vary in terms of length and severity and of course market reaction can also be different every time. Our analysis provides indications only and of course further due diligence should be undertaken before trading. Don't forget to subscribe to stay alerted to our regular chart analysis videos throughout the week and other explainers on the big financial topics.